K-pop megagroup BTS might not have won a highly coveted Grammy award last month, but Korea still had cause to celebrate because Korean-American violist Richard Yongje O'Neill did. He won the Grammy Awards a Best Classical Instrumental Solo for his performance of the Theophanidis Concerto for Viola and Chamber Orchestra. This world-renowned violist, now based in Boulder, Colorado, has been making waves in the classical world for over a decade now, especially in Korea, with his frequent media appearances, successful albums and performances. And I'm delighted to say that he joins us on the show now via video link for this week's Touch Basins Hall. Mr. O'Neill, thank you for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, first, I'd like to give our wholehearted congratulations to you on your Grammy win. It's an amazing achievement. This was, in fact, the third time, I understand, that uh, you had been nominated, but obviously the first time you'd won. Tell us, what was it like when your name was called out this time? Uh, it was just uh, um, beyond words. I, I was so incredibly happy and uh, thrilled. Um, I think you, you never really understand how much it means to win something until you've lost, you know, and as you've mentioned, you know, I was nominated, my first nomination was uh, 15, 16 years ago, you know, mm. I was a younger man, and then 10 years ago. So, so to get this nomination uh, now in my life, uh, as well as uh, during this incredibly challenging period of this pandemic, which has now been... Uh, plaguing the world for over a year, mm. um, it just meant it amplified, it uh, augmented the experience tremendously. Right during your acceptance speech, you said it was a great day for the viola. I understand it's only the second time a violist has won this category. What does it mean for a violist to win a Grammy? Uh, you know, the Grammys um, for all the criticism and. Uh, and uh, controversy that the Grammys cause every year, not just in the <laughs> classical world, in, in the pop world. Um, the Grammys truly are one of the most um, enigmatic awards um, because it's, uh, a peer, it's a peer based award. Uh, mm. You're nominated by your peers, um, meaning all of the professionals in the industry, not just musicians like myself, but composers, sound engineers, uh, publicists, uh, uh, record producers, everyone involved in the Academy. It's a very broad community. So the nomination itself is a tremendous honor. To, to make the shortlist uh, is, is really incredibly uh, meaningful. And winning the award is equally meaningful because um, winning a majority of the votes uh, among the shortlist is, is really, really challenging. Mm. And um, this is not a popularity contest in the sense that, you know, it's not a public choice award, you know, like the People's Choice Award. This is not somebody calling in and voting. This is um, you, you're the very most powerful people in the music industry in the United States voting. Mm. So uh, for to choose a violist among three of my favorite world-class pianists, Daniel Trifonov, Igor Levitt, and Kirill Gerstein, uh, and my favorite violinist, um, Augustine Hadelich, um, and three of the world's greatest orchestras, the Bayerischen Rundfunk, um, the Boston Symphony, the Philadelphia Orchestra. Mm. That's a tremendous list of people. I mean, that's a who's who of, of everyone that's in the world that's working today. So it, it, it was a really, it was a huge shock for me that um, that uh, people chose me. Well, you have an incredible CV. You are the first violist to receive the artist diploma yes. from Juilliard, an Avery Fisher career grant recipient, multiple platinum albums, concerto performances with the best orchestras like the London Philharmonic, the Los Angeles Philharmonic, and now you're a Grammy Award winner. What do you owe your success to? Um, I, I, I view my, my, my success in life, not just music, but in general, my, my survival is sort of an improbable situation. Mm. Um, I didn't set out my life um, to become famous or to be a soloist or a Grammy Award winner or 
any of those prizes that I dearly cherish. But it, the, the truth of the matter is I love music more than anything. And um, I committed early on in my life um, as a young man growing up in a very small rural community with very little opportunity uh, and very little means. But I, I made a promise to myself as a young man, as a boy, that if I became a musician, whatever that may be, mm. sitting in an, the back of an orchestra, teaching, uh, you know, you name it, I'd be happy, you know, and I've lived my life on that principle completely. And luckily, I think uh, life has rewarded me for that dedication. And, and, and um, honestly, it was a lot of sacrifice and a lot of failures and a lot of uh, risk taking. I think uh, that's that's the hard thing, and, you know. A lot of artists, are so so many people are so deserving, and there's mm. so few positions available. And I feel I consider myself lucky every day uh, to do what I do because it is a privilege. It's a tremendous privilege, and for a violist, um, in particular, violists, um, there's there's a wide perception in the world community that viola is an inferior instrument. It's not deserving of of solo time mm. and for the academy to give not only me but all violists this hope that hey actually people that really matter believe in the viola as a solo vehicle uh not only makes great for all violists but i think it justifies my mm. lifelong sort of <laughs> um passion to try to try to just do the best i can every day what is it about the viola that's special to you? I understand you started with a violin at the age of five, but then you picked up the viola a bit later. What spoke to you about the viola? The viola is, and some people call it an imperfect instrument. Uh, Physics-wise, it's too, it's too small for the, the, the range it's been assigned. Um, and because of that, the sound is very unique. Um, some describe it as uh, a, a dark red wine or a purple color or a mellow or, or somber or foggy. Um, I always have thought of it as sort of more like, it sort of lies in the low woman's voice range, almost like an alto. Mm. So to me, it's a very human range. And because I think of that register and its sort of uniqueness of sound, it's a very, it's almost to me like an actor. It's given this very blank canvas of, of possibilities. And on that canvas, you can paint whatever you want uh, because uh, there, hasn't been, there hasn't been the tradition in history like there has on the violin. Mm. You know, violin... Uh, there's been, for all the great violinists on the world today, there have been so many hundreds of great violinists that have lived before them. And there's this huge tradition and pressure for them to either conform to the tradition of what came before them or, or, or really break out and do something new. And I think with violists, it's a new, it's a new world. And it's a new territory. And I find that very liberating that I can walk out on stage and a lot of people have, will have never heard what I'm about to play. And I find that very freeing and it gives me a, a, a sense that I can, it's a, a great responsibility to, for me to recreate the music in a very, um, in the utmost of integrity, uh, but also that I can, I don't have precedent. This is, this is sort of new ground. I think anyone who watches your performances will be moved by uh, what you do and the range of uh, sounds and emotion that you do bring to something that we haven't really heard a lot, as you've said, and it is very unique. This, uh, it's got a very rich and uh, dark colour to it, which I think you bring out wonderfully in your performances. As you mentioned, it wasn't uh, an easy road that was paved for you, and part of your journey was charted in a 2004 KBS TV documentary series called Human Theatre, in Gangkukjang, and that charted uh, your, uh, your, your musical career as well as your mother's search for her birth family. That was a huge hit, and you were invited for a second series as well, and that really put you on the map for Korean audiences here. How did that happen, and what impact did that have on your life? 
you know, I was born here in the United States, um, uh, yet uh, the the complicated thing about being American, if I might put it, is that um, even though I was born in this country, I was raised in this country, uh, my many of my family that I loved died in this country um, and fought for this country, uh, my grandfather in the World War II, uh, yet I've I've always felt like an outsider, um, uh, treated by other Americans as as a perpetual foreigner, uh, because they just take one look at my face and uh, they judge me, and that was really hard, and it, it caused a lot of pain early in life as a child growing up. Uh, when I came to Korea in my early twenties for um, for concerts. Uh, with the great Kyung, uh, Kyungwa Chung, Chung Kyungwa, the, the world, world famous violinist and, and dear, dear mentor. Um, I was so struck that, um, first of all, I, I landed in Korea and if I didn't open my mouth, I fit right in. You know, <laughs> I, I, nobody looked at me or mm. called me names or treated me any differently. They just assumed I was one of them. Mm. And not to oversimplify, but as my search for my blood family for my mother, who's, who's handicapped and cannot look for herself, mm. continued, I, I was embraced and accepted and held up by so many Koreans. Um, and, um, you know, my mom's handicapped and a lot of handicapped people in the world are discriminated against every day. They can't mm. get work and people call them all sorts of names and they're marginalized. But... The Korean public was so kind to my mother, and that meant everything to me. And it, and I, I was just, I was, for the first time in my life, I felt like I was given another blank canvas of, of, of this love and support by, by so many people. And so um, that, 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 the parents on, in Gangbukjang, we, we did not, my mother and I did not, we failed in finding blood family. But we realized it's through that program that we inherited so many brothers and sisters in Korea that we had no idea that accepted us as their own. Yes, it was a very moving series and uh, a lot of people here in Korea was very touched by it and uh, especially all the work that you put into your career as well. And we don't have time to go through all that you've achieved in your very vast, extensive uh, musical career. But one thing I do want to mention is uh, in your Grammy acceptance speech, again, you gave your eternal thanks to your family as well as the uh, the Takash Quartet and CU Boulder for keeping, keeping me alive. That's what you said. Uh, what did you mean by that? And can you tell us briefly about what it means to be part of this uh, renowned Takash Quartet? I really meant, I'm a very literal person, and I meant that literally. Um, this last year has been, for musicians, at least for myself, and I would say many musicians across the world, it's been devastating um, seeing all of our work and our, our what we live for, to play for people, uh, taken away. And all, of course, in the interest of public safety. I, 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 first and foremost, I want people to be safe and healthy. Um, but it, it, for a musician that dedicates their whole life to, to the phrase, the show must go on, and then all of a sudden that's broken, that trust, you know, I think if you ask any artist, um, fulfilling that promise of the show must go on is a very difficult one. Mm. It's um, your, your, um, your mother could be dying and you're still expected to go up on stage like any professional and deliver music. Because I'm sure people feel badly for anyone that's suffering, mm. but that's not what people, when they come to your concerts, they trust that you're going to bring them music no matter what. Mm. And that's my professional duty to um, bring music to people because I, I always, I never know who's in my audience. I always, it's, I always, it could be Carnegie Hall. It could mm. be in my, you know, a small house concert here in Boulder. I'll, I'll still do my very best because it means everything that moment. Um, and I might just add, you know, this has been a very, very, very sad time here in Colorado and Boulder because we had a very terrible tragedy, a shooting, a shooting, um, a, a mass shooting um, uh, a few weeks ago. Sure, and, of course. Um, 
10, 10 people uh, were, were killed in the middle of the day just trying to do their normal life, including mm. a police officer. And I was asked by the police officer's, fam police officer's family to, to play for his burial. And, and um, in moments of in tragedy, in moments of triumph, in moments, the, the greatest moments, the, the most simple moments, I think music is there for everybody because it, it's such a powerful language. And, and I feel like the responsibility to, to bring music to people is something I, I'll do till I die, and, unless it's taken away from me. And, um, you know, we're, we're reminded every day of, you know, you mentioned in, in Ganguk Jang. I think the reason why In Ganguk Jang is so powerful is because everyone has a story. Hmm. Everyone. Hmm. You just have to sit somebody down, anyone, and ask them if they really opened up, they would tell you things that would that would really make you wonder, wow, there's heroism everywhere in everyone's life. They might not make it to television. They might not make it to the stage. But I, I really, truly believe that there is so much daily heroism that goes on in the world. And um, I think music embodies that. It's a, it's a universal language that connects, you know, people of different cultures, different languages, um, hmm. you know, different backgrounds. It's so magical. I really wish we could talk more, but unfortunately we are almost out of time. Very, very briefly though, uh, what do you have next? What plans do you have that you can share with us? Um, the Takash Quartet, uh, which I said kept me alive, we um, literally, they're, they're my they're part of my family hmm. uh, through this whole time of no concerts. We've been rehearsing very, very hard. And we have a European tour coming up to um, Madrid, Luxembourg, and the Music Variety in Vienna. So I'm please, all of your listeners and you, please cross your fingers that, that uh, there won't be any more sh lockdowns in Europe. Sure. But, you know, the mu Music Variety hmm. is a temple of music. Hmm. So I'm looking forward to that trip very much. Yes, and I'm sure our listeners here in Korea cannot wait to see you back in Korea sometime soon as well, once the pandemic is over, to celebrate your Grammy win with you. Congratulations to you once again. We've been speaking to Grammy Award-winning violist Richard Yongje O'Neill. We very much appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure.